What happens when you hear something new? Perhaps it's controversial. What do you do with that information? Welcome back. I'm Gila Ross, host of the Power Up podcast, where we share short, relatable ideas to upgrade and impact our everyday life. And in this series, Torah for Today, we take a short idea from the Torah portion of the week and use it to uplift our week. Has this ever happened to you? You hear something and it's new. It's either a new piece of information, it's a new idea, and it makes you wonder. What do we do when we get such a piece of information, when we hear something like that? There's an incredible story, and if you've ever heard this story before, I want you to stop and listen to it as if you've never heard it before. So Bilam was a prophet and he was hired by Balak to curse the Jews. Bilam asked God for permission and God told him no. But Bilam persisted. He was stubborn. It was something he absolutely wanted to do. So God told him, do it. But what will come out of your mouth will come out of his mouth. So he goes on the way. And while he's traveling, this most incredible thing happens. And his donkey starts talking to him. Put yourself in that place for a second. Like, what would you do if you suddenly encountered an animal that started talking to you? A donkey, a dog, a horse, whatever it is, an animal started talking to you. I think most of us would be shocked. But you follow the story along and Bilam reacts to the a talking donkey as though nothing, as if it was routine. How could he do that? How could he ignore this miraculous event of having a talking donkey? I mean, for goodness sake, he was a prophet. How could he do this? Bilam was so fixated on his goal. He was absolutely going to go and curse the Jews that he ignored this miraculous event that was in front of his eyes. He couldn't recognize the obvious. How does this apply to us? In the Haggadah that we read on Pesach and Passover, we're told to go out and learn what Arami did to our forefathers. And that's followed by a whole set of verses from the Torah explaining the story of how we got down to Egypt and how we came out of Egypt. Now, the language that is used is a bit strange because it's enough to just say learn. What does it mean to say go out and learn? And it's teaching us here, the Lubavitch Rebbe says, it's teaching us here what our approach should be to studying Torah. Because all of us have a comfort zone, right? Things that we are comfort, comfortable with. And sometimes when we hear a new idea, it's very easy to dismiss that new idea, to say, ah, it's just a stringency. So what he's telling us, this go out and learn is telling us is, Step number one before you approach the learning is you have to go out of your comfort zone. You have to have an open mind to approach the learning that you're going to do with honesty to see what's really going on. What does that look like? So I want to share with you two incredible stories of people that I know. A couple of years ago, I was leading a family trip to Israel, a group of families that came together to explore Israel and to also connect and learn about Judaism. And one of the rabbis that was speaking gave a class and was talking about how parents often want their children to grow up connected to Judaism. But it doesn't stop there. If we think about it, we also want our grandchildren to opt into Judaism. And the actions that we do today are going to make an impact, not just on us, not just on our children, but also our grandchildren. And it's a, it's really a, a topic that you can think about, an idea that you can stop and think and say, wow, what I'm doing today is going to make an impact, not just on my children, but on grandchildren that I haven't yet met. And we can think, ah, it's crazy. But there was one woman in the group that I know of, I'm sure there were other people that also took messages from it, who listened with an open mind and it made an impact on her and she made changes to her life because of it. She listened to what he was saying, this idea that what we do today impacts not just our children, but our grandchildren. And she said, hold on a second, I want my ch grandchildren to opt into Judaism. And therefore she made that commitment to 
make Shabbos a central part of their family life. Incredible, because she was able to leave that comfort zone and listen to an idea with an open mind and let it affect her, she's able to make decisions that are going to impact not just her, not just her children, but also her grandchildren. There's another dear friend, a dear student of mine, who is married for many years. And she heard about this concept, this idea of mikvah and the role that it can play in bringing freshness, excitement to a marriage. And for a lot of people, when they hear an idea like this, especially when you've been married a long time, it's, it's, it's a mind blowing idea. But it's also a very foreign concept, a very different way of doing things. Yet she was able to leave her comfort zone and say, this idea intrigues me. Yes, it's something new, something I haven't heard before, but I want to approach it from an open mind. And what she did is she and her husband together decided to learn about the laws of how you bring mikvah and how you bring that cycle that keeps that freshness in the marriage alive into their life and they took it on later on in life and they saw such incredible incredible things happen to their marriage because of it why because she was able to leave her comfort zone when she heard an, a new idea and say I want to listen to this with an open mind I want to explore the truth of it Bilaam's fi- failure was that he was so stubborn and fixated on the goal that he wanted to do that even though the most incredible miraculous thing happened in front of his eyes, he was able to ignore it. For us, our success comes when we're able to leave our comfort zone and look at things with an open mind and explore the truth and the honesty and find out what's actually going on because that is how we grow. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I'd love to hear if this resonated with you and if you'd like to discuss it further, you can get in touch with me. You can find me on Instagram at it's Gila Ross or you can WhatsApp me. My number is in the show notes and we can set up a time to discuss this further. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Have a wonderful day and please take a moment to rate, review, subscribe and share this podcast to anyone else who would benefit from it.